All right, folks, how are you doing? So my fellow YouTuber and Scottish YouTuber rival, Jeff Skeptic, has once again got on this tangent about, you know, the history of the Scottish monarchy and the Scottish nation being sold down the river and all this sort of thing about how Scotland was sold out to all oh, these foreigners and all this foreign element and all the rest of it. Now, there are certainly truths to what he's saying. He's not completely wrong. To my mind, it's not that he's wrong as such. It's more like he's short-sighted and overly simplistic in the way that he view things you know he sees things through this kind of persecution narrative or this kind of inferiority complex or something you know uh, and i think that has a lot to do with his own unresolved psychological and emotional issues being projected onto larger historical subjects quite frankly i think that's basically what's what the heart of it it really is all about you know um, because if you watch his videos like he himself talks about all these things i'm not going to really bring all this up because first of all i don't really want to embarrass the man quite honestly i don't think he's a bad person i think he's actually a fairly decent person overall who is just somebody who's you know he has these kind of unresolved issues at the subconscious level that kind of end up coming out and being manifested as projections onto larger issues rather than kind of searching inwards you know and going into his own issues personally like just sitting in a room for two weeks just you know with no distractions just resolving these underlying deep-seated subconscious issues you know uh, he's not a bad guy i mean he has produced actually some really good content in the past like britain the key to world history i will say this to the day i die this is probably the best thing i've ever seen on youtube by anyone ever i thought i was fantastic but it's obvious that this guy has a lot of... He's dragging around a lot of baggage, you know, and it's, a lot of it comes out as projection to me. I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist, obviously, but, you know, uh, on the other hand, if even I can spot that this is basically projection, you know, then um, it's pretty acute, you know, because I'm not trained in these areas and even I can kind of see what's going on here, you know, but... This whole idea that King Malcolm III Canmore sold Scotland down the river and all this sort of thing, and that Scotland was sold out to all these foreigners, well, you know, that's a very myopic way of looking at things. It's very short-sighted, and it's very much rooted in this black-and-white narrative, us versus them, good guys and bad guys, and it's just totally hitting a dead end. It's just banging your head against a brick wall. It's just like... Good God, are we not beyond this by now? This kind of playground narrative of uh, the greens versus the blues, or you know, all this sort of thing. Um, that team, they guys are arseholes, but us, we're sound like I. Our gang's totally fine, but they, they, they're all the pricks who are there. We need to, this primitivism, you know, we need to evolve beyond this barbarism, quite frankly. And besides, what he's saying is not really true. Like I said, it's very myopic. He's not totally wrong either. It's just short sighted. It's not that he's wrong. It's just that he's focused on this very narrow narrative, which is not accounting for the wider facts and for the finer details about what's really going on. So when he's talking about Malcolm the Third Canmore selling Scotland out, is there truth to that? Kind of, sort of, but not really. I mean, if you take into account like the wider political situation of what was going on in 11th and 12th century Scotland at the time and Britain overall i mean you know you have to look broader than that and you have to kind of go into more you know more depth you have to consider the motivations what's going on you know uh, what's the political landscape like at that time you know um, you know and i certainly recommend this book richard the first the king who made scotland by uh, richard Oram. This is a very, very good book. This is a book I've been reading quite extensively about the reign of King David I. I mean, I know I'm talking about Malcolm Canmore, but David I was a son. Um, he was the youngest son, in fact, of uh, King Malcolm III and Queen Margaret, you know. And um, whereas this book doesn't really specifically cover Malcolm III, you know, it does kind of give an insight into it what's going on at the time in the political landscape and all this sort of thing and it's worth checking that out it's don't just fall into the trap of just the kind of black and white us versus them goodies and baddies you know cops and robbers kind of narrative you know 
black team here, white team here, or green team here, blue team here, Celtic there, Rangers here, Hearts there, Hibs there, whatever, you know, Manchester United here, Liverpool there, us good, them bad. You know, you have to evolve beyond that sort of thing, you know. Otherwise, you're never going to gain a true insight and understanding. And like I said, I don't view Jed Skeptic as a bad guy. He's been incredibly rude and incredibly uh, <laughs> offensive towards me in the past and certain things that he has said. Well, as he said, I don't really mean said because I never met him in person, but things that he has communicated to me in the past. He's been incredibly arrogant, obnoxious and rude. At the same time, I kind of understand that he is a very primitive creature at the end of the day so on one level I kind of give him a pass or I'm tempted to because I kind of understand his background somewhat you know but on the other hand he's been a real prick <laughs> you know you can't take things personally in life otherwise you'll never make any progress if you take everything personally you're going to be stuck in this emotional quagmire this emotional quicksand and you'll never evolve and move forward you can't take things personally even when you're insulted and make any progress you know, so even though I think he's a complete dickhead on the one level, I do see genius and potential in this guy at some level, maybe not up to quite my own level. But, you know, I do see that this guy does kind of have quasi redeemable qualities in a sense, even though he's a complete arsehole. But, you know, it doesn't matter what I personally think of him. And at the end of the day, it doesn't personally um, matter that I don't like him, per se, but, you know, uh, at the end of the day, if we don't reach a common understanding, we're never going to progress. Anyway, I hope that makes sense, and thank you for watching.